privilege. I'm not an investor at Vault Capital, but that's what my <laughs> tag says. Um, sweet, we've got a good group of people on the panel today, and this talk is going to be about how, about how dApps leverage chain abstraction. Um, sweet, and to get started, maybe we'd love to have you guys intro yourselves. I know a couple of you guys have already talked, but an intro and a high level overview about what you're building and improving. Thank you. Uh, I'm Oleg, I'm the founder of Sweat Economy, and we're building a product that makes the world more physically active by making your movement valuable and tradable and liquid. And the goal is to build a movement economy where you will be able to exchange the value of your physical activity as a payment for goods, products, services and experiences. So, yeah, it's a big vision, it's a big project. We've been at it already for 10 years and we covered a lot of ground and we're ready for 10 more. Awesome. Um, I'm Nick here, I lead BD for DAPDAP. Um, we are positioning ourselves to be your gateway into Ethereum Layer 2s. The idea is to be the central hub where you can connect onto any EVM compatible network and access the dApps that are available there. Almost having it be this central hub where you can stay farm, lend, borrow, bridge, swap as you would normally and access DeFi and do the things you want to do but in a consolidated platform. Similarly, tar uh, targeting a big goal. You know, we've got big plans for 2024 and years beyond, so uh, yeah. Uh, hey, my name is Anatoly, I've just been a talk five minutes ago. So um, I'm founder of Calibria and founder of AlfredBot. AlfredBot is a simple bot for your swaps and snipes, and Calibria operates on OFA, and we actually build different solutions in transactions by network. Awesome. Um, I'm Peter, uh, I'm founder of Hero Wallet, and uh, uh, we're working on the place on down. So we as a main wallet in the ecosystem, now we have more than 1 million daily active users. The operator, uh, we do a lot of stuff to avoid more people uh, in the web and make the wallets, the crypto infrastructure available for any users and like running with them the best in like, my experience. Uh, and technology stack. So. Great. Um, thank you for the intros. Um, so, the first topic would love to go into how your products currently use chain abstraction, and the answer can be no. Um, but, and if the answer is no, we'd love, love to hear about how you guys navigate building with the current infrastructure stack. Okay, so I'll start off, I'll start off because we're actually kind of a no. Um, we abstract, in a sense, the UI layer. We're not abstracting accounts or assets. Um, and by doing this, we're leveraging BOS. So BOS is a protocol developed by Mir. It's the blockchain operating system. And with this, we're allowed to deploy um, composable frontends. And I think what's really important here is to differentiate smart contracts from frontends. So in a vision that we see you know, years beyond, there will be multiple applications that you use on a daily basis that could be calling from the most prominent smart contracts and protocols, say Uniswap, QuickSwap, Aave, Compound, right? So with this in mind, what we're doing now is leading this front end, being the pioneers to be able to have POS leverage the front end aspect and be a consolidated platform that has, you know, 100 to 500 applications live where you can connect your wallet, use even compatible networks and leverage this aspect of using multiple front ends, but then interacting with the smart contracts that are, you know, secure, safe, audible, you know, um, battle tested and ones that, you know, not and truly used on a daily basis. So, um, yeah, at the moment, the vision here is leveraging front ends and not going deep into account abstraction as of yet, but obviously chain abstraction and account abstraction and asset abstraction will come soon. So, um, yeah, we're, we're flipping it on its head and saying no at the moment. Yeah, I would add, like, say the stuff, say no in the moment, but actually, like, the vision is to use chain abstraction, abstraction of course, uh, but um, small note here, so um, existence users, they just get used to 
um, you know, like those um, like gas and pigeon stuff, and you need to educate them in order to import uh, to uh, you know, like chain abstraction uh, approach. So yeah, UI like balance abstraction and UI tricks is actually what we're already like deploying right now to the Tonyer bot, and uh, yeah, that's uh, small steps what to do. But for the next wave of adoption, probably you don't need to like, probably next like user which will like land in a couple of years to crypto, yeah, they will not know about the chain. I think to, to add on to that sort of like having an app on app stores but without you necessarily realizing you're using the underlying tech, right? In the same way you use Gmail, Outlook, or Hotmail, but you're using SMTP Pop or IMAP as the, the tech to send mail or receive mail, right? You don't need to think about the portal you're using, but just use the apps that are leveraging the portables underneath. So that's, that's a very important to Yeah, I'll add that to the, we know that absence of chain abstraction is a huge issue. Um, we've run a lot of campaigns with uh, dApps on other chains and conversion rate of people able to cross over and get an account, get it funded, is very, very low single percentages. And they want to, they try, they fail, they are frustrated and they are unhappy users because of that. With chain abstraction, we're going to be able to allow them to achieve that result with a couple of clicks. And that is the difference uh, between happy customer and unhappy customer, making money and not making money. It's incredible, huge kind of move forward, both from the user engagement and also from monetization. Okay, we use actually chain abstraction pretty deep. So, with the users imagining, actually, they can probably be paying gas for them, and uh, we execute almost 900,000 transactions per day uh, for users. And uh, I think this is one of the key points how we have this good onboarding experience because with the chain abstraction, we was able to do not ask people to understand how the money works, we just create a wallet, and if you need to send your USDT, you don't have to buy near before. And I think this is one of the great experiences with the like, kind of abstraction which help us to create a product which is so easy to understand and to use. And in the future, we are going to do a lot of new features in this direction. We will use account abstraction, so people will be able to sign transaction on any chain uh, by using their bot to pay for gas. And uh, this is going to be a pretty huge product, and uh, we will move all the features to any other chains. And uh, I, I'm a big fan of account abstraction. I think we can achieve a lot in the onboarding experience with it. Right, um, Anatoly, could I ask you a question around de like deploying a Telegram bot on various different domains? So the frictions that it would take right now versus what it would what would be solved with kind of a chain of traction there. So it's not about like deploying and developing. Developer is not confused at all. So. Um, that's why actually people use Telegram bots because developers who do that, those, they're, they're not confused with those like issues. But uh, for the user, like we have like the Roland, the Roland centric future. We have like Blast coming in tomorrow. We have Base, Arbitrium, all of that. And for user, it's actually the challenge to you know, like jump from one network to another. And um, and yeah, so in terms of like Telegram bots, user will be just happy to you know, like paste something like intent and then. Um, don't care about like, which specific L2 is just executed. Yeah. And, yeah, that's it. Yeah, perfect. And, well, like, you kind of touched on this, but you mentioned kind of the product impact on the user level. You said it's hard to retain users after you acquired them. Um, can you speak more to the product challenges on the, like, the business impact side um, without a full chain abstraction suite? Yeah. Um, we have millions of users and by and large they're not crypto natives and when they come in they have some dApps that they have heard of and they would like to interact with and we receive the support emails like you know kind of how do I trade on pancake swap and set of instructions would be nearly endless wouldn't it be amazing to just be able to click on pancake swap open it and being able to trade because behind the scenes we spun up your account 
we managed to breach some assets and you know kind of cover your gas fees and you can literally just go and trade so I don't think that the issue is that it's hard to retain users right now. They are retained, but it's very difficult to paint the vision of Web3 that they've heard because it is extremely confined. And you know, right now they're in near. If they go and they engage with another ecosystem, it is again limited. It is isolated islands, and we just need to start thinking about it in uh, kind of in a bigger sense you know, kind of from the planet perspective. All of these things need to be joined up. And as you said, you know, people don't need, you know, kind of, when I use any app, I don't give a shit if it's on AWS or GCP, right? I mean, it works. I, 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 it would never even cross my mind to wonder, you know, kind of what back tech they are using if I'm a layman. And that is the situation that we're going to find ourselves in literally within the next year or two. Or are we going to continue struggling with bringing next 10 million, 100 million, you know, next billion people? I just want to chime in. I think it's to that point of reducing fragmentation, right? Like we have so much tribalism that happens in these segregated communities, different ecosystems, whether you come in for NFTs, whether you come in for a DAP or a token, and how we kind of bring that together and have it be captured, you know, at the attention level, right? Like if people are coming in to use sweat and exercise, cool, then how do they take that further and interact with DeFi as a whole and use other ecosystems, right? How can we further this notion of being able to use multiple DAPs and ecosystems in one unified experience and having it be really easy and have the barriers be broken down. And so we really want to reduce fragmentation. I think that's really a core cool premise here. There's going to be a hundred, you know, L2s that are coming out this year. There's probably going to be a thousand new forks, hundreds of apps. How do we improve this? And it comes first with, you know, improving the user journey, the user experience, chain of traction, and ultimately creating universal front ends that actually improve this experience and separating the aspect of I'm using this protocol or that protocol, but larger, you're using an application and you're using DeFi. And that's really the point to drive home. Great. Um, I think we can move on to the next topic. I think as application builders, you have to identify and choose chain abstraction infrastructure, infrastructure to use. Um, maybe we can start with you, Peter. Like, how, how you came to choose um, Near and, and how you navigated that design space. We, we chose Near two years ago, and for the last two years we developed some, some stuff around Near, so it was not a question when we started to create like, this stuff as Telegram uh, a month ago. Um, the kind of abstraction is obvious solution because uh, you have to create product that people can start using monthly. People have to use them and pay, and you cannot ask them to deposit some money to explore it. And the only one thing how you can do, you have to pay for users uh, for their transaction, for their gas. We figured out that we can actually do this, and uh, we find a solution with near foundation to create like this really good user transaction. And uh, it's a pretty obvious decision. It's only one technology you can use if you want to achieve this, this goal. So, uh, and in general, Neo, I think, is, has a really good space for a customer application. If you're not that care about TBL, but you care about like some interesting uh, like economics, which can application use inside, maybe super customer application, starting from like food building or like some Tinder application. You can create many cool stuff inside with like local economics. Neo could provide a really great infrastructure for this to build customer application. And, uh, I can't abstraction is like being part of this. Great, and other panelists have comments to add there? Yeah, I mean, for us it was a big decision and it took a long while to, we looked at 14 different chains and we chose near because of three things. One, everyone was talking about next billion people, but frankly, their products were not built for the next billion people. Uh, you know, there was a narrative and there was a complete failure to deliver something that could process a lot of transactions at a reasonable cost. And, you know, kind of on that basic premise, you know, kind of majority of, 
the chains that we looked at were, were, were not viable for us because our users are low value. I mean, low value is three to five dollars, and this is a starting point. Um, you know, if it's eight bucks on Ethereum, you know, what kind of next billion people are we talking about? You know, they just don't exist in the world. So first it was doing what you're saying, next billion people, high throughput, really low um, cost of transaction, and even more importantly, focus on UX, especially onboarding UX. You know, um, account abstraction by design is an absolute incredible gift for Web2 users because the fact that, you know, you can change keys, the fact that you can, uh, um, you know, kind of have multiple keys on various devices is an incredible advantage and still EVMs struggle to bring these users in because they just can't fathom why on earth I can't change my key. You know, uh, this is a normal thing that people expect. I can change the key to my door, I can change the key to this and that, why can't I change the key here? So that's just, you know, kind of a big showstopper in people's minds. And everyone in the VM world is talking about chain, uh, uh, account um, abstraction as if this is just some kind of amazing thing that just, you know, came around. And you know, kind of, I'm, I'm telling them that you know, Nier's got it by design, and quite a lot of people are not even aware of it, which is you know, kind of something that we probably should push. The second thing uh, was team. I really, really enjoyed the interaction with Ilya, with Alex, and the team is absolutely phenomenal. There are a lot of bullshitters in the world that you know will be selling you snake oil all night long. Uh, without actually having a product. These guys have a product and it works. And when we tested it, it was, you know, kind of our minds were blown. And the third thing that uh, uh, convinced us uh, was actually the alignment of strategy. We are, we already have more than 150 million users. We know how to get to a billion. And it's good to work with people who are not trying to build a product for the next 100 whales, but who are actually trying to build products for tens of millions, hundreds of millions of low value users, because approach, architecture, and every decision that you're gonna make is fundamentally, diametrically different with these two audiences. So you cannot go, oh, we'll start with whales, and then we're gonna go for mass market. That never happens. So, you know, kind of people who are building for TVL are people that will never be able to bring in the next hundred million people. 100% agree. Great. 100% as well. Um, so interestingly enough, I mean, I came into DAPDAM outside of the near ecosystem. Um, so coming in, um, really the product captured my attention. DAPDAM wouldn't be possible without BOS. Um, and so really this platform and product is a proof of concept as to what BOS can do in the power of decentralizing composable front ends. So it's a, it's a really interesting you know, angle here where we are pioneering what it means to deploy composable front ends and have a platform that showcases this technology that was developed by Nier. And so I think we're, we're taking a slightly different angle from everyone else because without DAPDAP, I don't think BOS would necessarily receive the attention or awareness as you know other protocols may may do on that on, on here. So I I'm, I'm very excited to see what happens next. You know we have a lot in the pipeline and a lot of it comes down to how much attention can we drive to educating users on new L2s, new DApps, new ecosystems, and driving the flywheels behind incentivizing actions. And I think a lot of it is not even necessarily to do with, oh yeah, let's give them these points or you know this airdrop or that airdrop, but it's like, let's educate them by being like, okay, come on to Linea, come on to Scroll, ZK, Sync, Manta, actually explore the ecosystems and then have a consolidated set of applications that they can actually try out and test and figure out if they like this specific ecosystem further. Um, yeah, a lot of that has to do with attention. I think attention there, there is very key. We are middleware. We want to connect applications, bridges, 
networks together and have there be a consolidated platform. And really, there's never quite been a, you know, a central hub like this. I think a good example as to how users have been incentivized to participate and learn about new things has been Galaxy, you know, rabbithole.gg, but it's almost like a set of links. You go onto this quest, you click on this link, you, you complete the action, but it's not like you're testing the platform. You're not using the new application, you're not using the new network, but adapt app, it's like, okay, actually try it out, actually use it, get a feel for it, you know, do some assets, purchase some assets, and have it be consolidated there. And, you know, with that being said, like the amount, the speed at which you can move assets around a network, your asset velocity increases tremendously. Imagine having one platform where you can bridge from this network to that network, and then deposit LP here, borrow on you know, this application, and still swap and do it all in one consolidated interface. So, very exciting. Um, you know, the idea here is to actually have you know the hundred L2s that are coming out to be in a swap platform, and then us to drive the attention to each application that comes out on each of these ecosystems. So um, a lot a lot to be said there. Bunch of features, even having portfolio management features coming out, um, like DBank. You can see where you've staked your assets, what you're farming, um, where you've landed on which protocols. Having it be right in front of you is such a you know visual improvement that, that improves the convenience of a user's you know, experience as a whole. And driving a user journeys becomes so easy we could be like, hey, Sweatcoin, you guys want to do this activation maybe for this specific region. Let's work with the partners that are best there. Let's do this and like, like actually drive incentives that make sense for people um, and having it be really easy to use. And I think that's ultimately the biggest vision. Let's, let's step away from protocol upgrades going from V1 to V1.167, 8, 9, 10, but then actually being like, let's improve the experience is improving the user journey and having it be easy so that we can onboard the next billion. I think that's very important. I do have one question. Um, mobile. Does, um, does BOSS composable components work on mobile native uh, application? It does. You just need to optimize for it. So, DapTap as of right now is not optimized uh, for mobile applications. We launched a week ago. With that being said, we got 30,000 users in one week, so obviously a huge product market fit. Um, that's just pure problem, mobile optimization that we need to do. Yeah. Because, so, BOS is just us taking HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and hosting it on near nodes or instead of AWS. Great. Um, this might be a spicy question, but as application builders, you are somewhat in service to your customers, right? Um, and so how do you feel about the design space between UX and user agency, right? Making decisions on behalf of the user, particularly around financial ones, right? Um, and you dictating trust and security assumptions. Um. I'm going to talk about my personal experience of switching from Windows to Mac. And in the first day, I really felt that my agency was taken away. But you know what? It fucking worked. And it worked a heck of a lot better. And what's most important for the user is not to be able to twist every single knob that you know that exists, but to actually get to the result in the fastest possible fashion. So over the last 10 years, what we learned is that you need to remove absolutely everything that is not essential. And if people are asking, then you are giving those seeking those settings an opportunity to go and tweak those uh, uh, those knobs. But. If you push, you know, for example, we have trading right now in Sweat Wallet, we had to completely remove slippage because on that screen, 99% of people just kind of went, well, what is slippage? How does it work? It, and all of a sudden, you're going to need to go through a massive education campaign. You remove it and you put it at an absolute maximum, there is no single complaint whatsoever. So you really need to think. I'm dealing with people. Good time for Jared. 
Huh? Good time for Jared to redo them. <laughs> Absolutely. But you look at if you're dealing with crypto natives who are coming with a massive amount of liquidity and they expect this to be there, yes. But if you're dealing with its next 10 million people that just want to see the magic of swapping one token to another, they definitely don't need any of these knobs. And that is coming back to my original point. If you're building for whales, the product that you build is going to be diametrically opposing what you will need to bring 100 million people. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I like the idea of starting away with this slippage configuration, but uh, but the thing that if user want to swap one asset to another, if you do like the max lupus tolerance for him, he will basically swap like one asset to zero. Uh, because like, <laughs> we have like very aggressive uh, environment, especially in those like um, cross-chain stuff. Um, so yeah, of course like L2s, they don't have the mempool, and we have like first come first serve, there's so not much sandwiches, but if like the cross-chain transaction will start on our Bitroom and finish on Ethereum, user will just no, receive nothing there. But so yeah, dynamically adjust the slippage. I like this idea. That's really great. Yeah, actually a great idea. That's a, that's a really great idea in terms of the, the slippage aspect of, of just just mitigating that. Not even have to think about that. Huge difference. Um, I mean, for us, I mean, everything is about user agency. Um, we built this platform to cater towards users as, you know, crypto natives are like, okay, what do we do? How do we make this easier? So everything is at, you know, where we put this user first, put it, you know, put them at the center of everything that we build. So, yeah, like, um, largely it's, it's about rooting the fragmentation and consolidating products. So everything thus far has been great. I'm only a week off for launch, so I think it's, it's something to reiterate on, you know, eh, months down the line. But everything we do is to, to improve the user journey and the user experience at large. I'll share one very unexpected test result that we ran recently. Um, on the main screen, we have this bunch of cards that you know can you can click to go and you know get into various different things. And we tested removing everything and leaving just one. And the result was the total number of clicks on one card was greater than the sum of all clicks on all cards together. That tells you a little bit about you know, kind of what do people want. Choice and complexity and knobs to you know, turn around or what do they actually need. If you ask them openly, they'll say, oh definitely I want to say which and I want that and I want this and you know you you're gonna be building this Rolls Royce and in reality all they want is just one button click works and they're happy. And they want you to tell them what to do, you know, make it easier for them. So yeah, yeah like, I mean if you think about the slippage wipe, like I mean you already know the like order book, like you already know the reserves. Why do you need to adjust slippage? Because you uh, can face the risk of non inclusion. So because like somebody will be before you and like move the price. So but if you would in you know, like an abstract way for the user, you know like all those estimation stuff and then um, calculate it for him, you will still have the same result, which he will do like also, but he will do it automatically. So yeah, that's totally agree. Like, user needs just one button, like print money, and that's it. Um, or no. Besides, besides users, there is also massive consideration for other projects from Web2 trying to come to Web3. When we started building on Nier, I been approached by Gazillion people. How did you choose? What was the framework? You know, kind of how did you compare? Because it's very, very difficult. And the last couple of conversations that I had, I basically told them, and maybe very soon you wouldn't need to worry about that. And people are like, what do you mean? And I explained to them the concept of chain abstraction, and they go like, huh, ah, okay. So it is quite possible that, especially for testing waters, in the future, businesses will have to come to near because it is a way to test waters on any chain and basically see where it works best, where do you have the best signal, the best traction, and then you might continue building on near or you might go and build natively. But I think also from enterprises and from businesses' perspective, 
chain infraction is going to solve a humongous headache where we spend 18 months evaluating different chains before you can start building. You know, here you can just start building, do an MVP, see what's working, and then make a decision. I think it's it's going to remove a lot of friction in bringing a lot more businesses in. I just want to add one thing. I think it's it's really interesting for the longest time possible. Um, so far, centralized exchanges have been probably the key to you know acquiring users outside of crypto into crypto and so with chain abstraction and with a platform like DAP, DAP, it's like let's break those barriers down and if we can be the platform that acquires users because it's so much easier to onboard and educate and then get them you know directly you know integrated in or, or pinpointed into a specific ecosystem and have them be able to try out the DAPs have them be able to try out the applications and, and explore the network, then we can kind of capture some of that market share and acquire users that want to go and explore a specific ecosystem. So let's both shake that up, you know? Let's do it. Great. Um, I think we're out of time. That was a lot of fun. Um, Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you.